Filing Cabinets and Logic Spiders, How People Remember Math, Part 1. Do you have any information you always get to with logic instead of just memorizing it? Here's a kind of silly example from my own life. I can never, ever remember which way time zones work. So every time I need to call someone far away, I have to think about how the sun rises over the East Coast first to figure out if they're ahead of me or behind me. It takes about four seconds of thinking. Now, you might think that it's ridiculous that I go through that process every time I want to see if a time zone is ahead of me or behind me. Why don't I just memorize which way they go? Well, that's the subject of today's video. I'm always trying to come up with ways to talk to students and teachers about how people learn math. Today, I'm going to share with you an analogy that I think is helpful about how we store and also use information. I want you to think about your brain as having two parts, a logic spider and a filing cabinet. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere with this. The filing cabinet is where we put things we want to remember. In math, we need to store definitions, what different symbols mean, and we need to store some fundamental big ideas. And some people try to stuff almost all their math knowledge in there. And we do our best to keep this knowledge in our filing cabinets and keep it organized so that we can go in and find what we need when we need it. When people practice with flashcards or remember acronyms like PEMDAS or learn to sing a fun math song, they are working on getting knowledge into their filing cabinet and trying to make sure that it stays there. The logic spider works completely differently. The logic spider does not store anything. The logic spider gets the information we did not store by starting with something in our filing cabinet and then weaving strands to make connections and logical deductions and extending patterns. But none of this is very useful we can't be sure that you and I are thinking about the same idea until we talk about concrete examples with a specific math content. So here's an elementary example. Imagine you ask a student what 12 times 7 is. Now consider these questions. What might an answer be like from A, a student mostly leaning on their filing cabinet, or B, a student relying heavily on their logic spider? Before you go on, please maximize your learning by pausing the video to stop, think, and try. Here are some of my answers to these two questions. If someone says 12 times 7 is 84 instantaneously, they're probably pulling only from their filing cabinet. Some children are taught to memorize their times tables up to 12. If someone thinks, well, 11 times 7 is 77, so one more copy of 7 would be 77 plus 7 equals 84, they use two pieces of information from their filing cabinet and use their logic spider to connect them and then extend to unstored information. Here's a high school example. Imagine you ask a student to find the sum of the inside angles of this figure. Please imagine answers to the same two questions and maximize your learning by pausing the video first to stop, think, and try. Here's what I came up with. If a student says, Okay, we learned this formula for the sum of interior angles. What was that formula again? Okay, I got the formula. It has five sides. Plug in n equals five and calculate. I get 540 degrees. That person is heavily relying on their filing cabinet. They had to retrieve that formula and the memory of watching the teacher fill it in. And the logic spider might be helping with the final calculation, but the geometry is mostly filing cabinet. Now compare that to the student who visualizes, well, I want to find the sum of all the interior angles, which means all these angles added together. I forgot the formula years ago. But I think I can break this shape up into a bunch of triangles. And a triangle's angles add up to 180 degrees. That's like one of the first things I learned in geometry. So adding all the triangle angle corners will be 5 times 180. But I've added in too much. I don't want all these corners in the middle. So if I delete the circle of 360 degrees, I'm left with 540 degrees. This student used a few basic pieces of information. A triangle's corners add to 180 degrees, which is from eighth grade, and a full circle is 360 degrees, which is from fourth grade, plus a lot of logical and deductive reasoning and breaking problems into easier problems by the logic spider to arrive at his answer. To return to my weird method for time zones, I use a method that connects together multiple basic pieces of information that I really remember well, like that the sun rises in the east. I'm exercising my logic spider, and I can check to see if my answer makes sense. To me, that is well worth four seconds. 
Sometimes people think that relying more on your filing cabinet is better because it involves fewer steps and seems simpler, less complicated. Other people think that relying on the logic spider is really great for your stronger math students. It's great for those that can do it, but it's a little too much for your average or struggling student. I understand where these ideas are coming from, but they're just plain wrong. Math education researchers have studied tens of thousands of students and agree these ideas aren't true. And I have seen that in my entire career, which has been dedicated to working with K-12 students in Title I schools. Overstuffing their filing cabinet is the cause of most of their math struggles, not a solution. In my next video, Logic Spiders and Filing Cabinets Part 2, we're going to talk about three important differences between relying more on your filing cabinet and relying more on your Logic Spider. And they have to do with answering these three questions. How much can we extend to new knowledge or answer problems that don't look exactly like the teacher's examples? How much do we benefit as we use these parts of our brain more and more? And how much can we self-correct and check our own work without relying on outside authority? Until next time.